Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for section two today where we're going to use random samples to describe populations. Um, today our learning target is I can use multiple random samples to examine variation in estimates. Um, one thing that I think about in this uh, section is I kind of think back to, um, oh, it was probably like fourth or fifth grade when I would go, uh, I think in math class, we went around and we asked our uh, classmates or we took like a poll and we asked some of our classmates, um, oh, like, uh, what's your favorite sport um, or what's your favorite food? or stuff like this. And then we made like, uh, we made a bar graph with that information. Uh, this kind of reminds me of that, where uh, we're using random samples. So we're asking a variety of people, maybe it's random middle school students to describe, you know, whatever it is you're trying to take a poll about or get more information about. Maybe it's a question like, um, should we have more or less homework or those types of things. And then we're going to describe populations using some of that data. Okay. So let's take a look here at a few examples and see. A um, little side note here, it says you have used unbiased samples to make conclusions about populations. Different samples often give slightly different conclusions due to variability in the sample data. So that's just kind of like saying, you know, maybe if you ask the sixth grade versus the seventh grade versus the eighth grade, you know, it's going to be slightly different or variable or changing data. Um, and we'll see that here in a few of these examples. So it says you and a group of friends want to know how many students in your school prefer pop music. There are a total of 840 students in your school. Each person in the group randomly surveys 20 students. The table shows the results. Okay, so in this table here, we have, it's titled the favorite type of music, and then you can either vote for country, pop, rock, or rap. And then here's your results when you surveyed 20 random students. So you can see here 20 plus 13 is 15, or 2 plus 13 is 15, plus 4 is 19, plus 1 is 20. These are the 20 people that you surveyed. And remember, you also have some friends. It says you and a group of friends. And each one of your friends also surveyed 20 people. Eight and three is 11, plus seven is 18, plus two is 20. So your friend, each friend also surveyed 20 people. Okay, so that's kind of breaking down this table. Letter A says, use each sample to make an estimate for the number of students in your school who prefer pop music. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the pop music category here. And <clears throat> let's make some estimates. It wants us to make some estimates for the number of students who prefer pop, pop music. Okay, so let's just take us for example. Let's, let's take you um, in your survey you found out that 13 out of the 20 people you surveyed prefer pop music. Let me ask you, what percent is that? What, how, do you, how could you find that percent? Well, go back a couple sections here, find your percent. You can just take your numerator divided by your denominator is one method. 13 divided by 20.65, which gives us 65% of the people that you surveyed said that pop music was their favorite. Okay. Well, if, if 65% say that their favorite uh, music is pop music, how many is that actually? Well, remember total number of students in the school. So total students is uh, 840. So if we took that 65% and we multiplied it by the total of students, 840, we would find out how many students prefer pop music in the school. Okay. So let's, let's do that. Let's take that 65% or 0.65 and let's multiply that 
by the total number of students in our school, you found in your data that 546 students prefer pop music. Okay. You, you, you found when you randomly um, surveyed 20 people that 500 and, uh, excuse me, of those 20 people, 13, per, 13 or 65% preferred the pop music. So 65% of the actual total number of students in the school is 546. Now, that's just using your data we should also use our friends data. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of make a table here so we can organize that. So let's do it like this. And this is you. This is friend A, friend B, friend C, and friend D. And let's write down our estimates. So you found that 546 students prefer pop music. How about friend A? Well, they found that 8 out of 20. 8 out of 20 prefer pop music, which is what percent? 8 divided by 20 would give us uh, 0.4 or 40 percent and 40 percent times our total of 840 students would give us 336. So 336. <clears throat> Again this is 40 percent. So we took 40 percent times our total to get our estimate of stu students who prefer pop music. Let's do the same for B, C, and D. Okay well B and C will be easy. They're the same thing. Uh, 10 out of 20, which we know is 50%. So 50% 50 of 840, in other words, 50% is the same thing as half. What's half of 840? Well, that would be 420. And it's the same for B and C. And then lastly, for friend D, he found 9 out of his 20 preferred pop music, which is, well, 9 out of 20 is between 8 and 10 out of 20. This was 40%. This is 45 or 50. So in between will be 45%. So 4.45 times 840. Uh, what does that give us? 0.45 or 45% times 840 gives us 378. Okay, so this would be our final answer for, for letter A. It, it asks for um, use each sample to make an estimate. So here are each one of our samples and our estimates. Okay. Letter B then asks us to describe the center and the variation of the estimates. Okay, what do those two things mean? What does it mean when it says find the center? Uh, another way to think about finding the center would be to find the median. And another way to think about the variation would be the range of our data. Okay, so um, let's look at, at the median. Remember, when you're finding the median, you have to line up your data from least to greatest. So um, let's line this up, least to greatest, 336. Um, 378, 420, two times, and 546. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, there was four friends plus you. When we find the median, we work our way to the middle. So I just like to cross out the ends and then the next two numbers, and then what's the middle? Well, the median is 420, would be the center. And the variation of the estimates, how much, uh, what's my range? Well, that's the greatest number minus the smallest number. 
So the greatest number was 546, and the smallest number was 336. So when you subtract those two, uh, you come up with 210 students for the variation. Okay. So um, kind of a lot of information there, um, but but hopefully you took something away from that. Why don't you pause here to try uh, the try it. This one might take a little bit of time as well too. So um, don't be afraid to pause for a while and work through this problem. All right, number one said, use each sample to make an estimate for the number of students in your school who prefer rap music and describe the center and the variation of the estimates. So very similar, except instead of now for using the pop, you're using rap. Okay, so what you should get for um, your data, well, instead of using uh, 13 out of 20 for rap, for you, you would use one out of 20, which is 5%. And then you have to take 5% times your total. So 0 0.05 times 840, what does that give you? 0 0.05 or 5 percent times 840. You found that about 42 students in your school prefer rap music. So maybe you made a, a table similar to this one. Um, <clears throat> that's probably what I would do. But uh, for you, you found uh, 42. Um, and then I'll just go and order A, B, C, and D for your friends. So uh, 84, 42, 42. Again, they're the same because these two matched up and uh, also it, it was the same as as you one out of 20 one out of 20 one out of 20 and then the last one was 126 okay for the estimates for all of you guys then for the center so for the median uh, it's 42 and for the range or the variation, it's 84 students, okay? So if you didn't get any of those and you have questions on how I came up with those, please come ask and I'll be glad to help you. All right, example two is kind of similar where we're using some data here to make some estimates. Uh, looks like in our chart, we're talking about number of hours worked in a week. Uh, and letter A says, use each sample to make an estimate for the mean, okay? Mean is average, same thing. So the mean number of hours or the average number of hours students with part-time jobs work each week. Okay, so this is student A and it looks like um, these are the hours he works each week. Okay, so it says describe the variation of the estimates. Um, okay, so we'll first find the means. Um, I'm gonna make a, a table again. I'm gonna say these are the different samples and um, I'll also have the means. It wants me to find the averages or the means. Okay, so I got A, B, C, D, E, and F. And I'm looking for their means or averages. Um, so let's see if we can find those here. Remember when you're finding the average, you add your data together and divide by how many there are. So for example, for letter A, um, I'll show you how that's done. So you would take six plus eight plus six plus six plus seven plus four plus 10 plus eight plus seven plus eight. So you get a total of 70. Okay, so we get a total of 70, and we have to divide that by how many there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, there's 10 data sets. 
So that makes that math pretty easy. 70 divided by 10 would give me 7. So the average um, hours worked um, per week for a part-time job for sample A or for this person is 7 hours per week. Okay, um, I'm going to go through this rather quickly just to save time here. When you add up all of them from B, you should come up with 73. And again, you got to divide that by 10, so the average would be 7.3. Letter C, when you add them, you should get 77. Average, 7.7. .7. Letter D, we've got 50. So our average per week would be 5. E, the sum is 80, and there's 10 data points, so that'd be an average of 8. And lastly, 90 divided by 10 would give us 9. Okay, so here are the averages on the bottom here. <clears throat> and um, it says, so now that we've found the mean for each one, it says, describe the variation of the estimates. Okay, remember that's... Um, so the, the variation of the estimates is like the range, just like we did in the last problem. Let's write that down. It's like the range. So what's the um, biggest number? Uh, looks like it's nine. Minus the smallest number, five. Um, so the range is four hours. Then. Okay. So here's average number of hours students work with part-time jobs per week. And then there's the variation. Letter B says, use all six samples to make one estimate for the mean number of hours students with part-time job work each week. Okay. So what that wants us to do is add all of our data together, all of our hours together, and divide by um, how many entry points there were. So in other words, we have to do 70 plus 73 plus 77 plus 50 plus 80 plus 90 to total uh, 440. And we have to divide that by, uh, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 total data points. And if you were to do that, 440, divided by 60, let's check here, gives us a total of 7.3 repeating. And that is um, hours. So on average, <clears throat> when you add all of these together, the hours of students work part-time jobs a week is they work about seven hours, 7.3 hours per week at a part-time job. Okay. Go ahead and pause here for the try it for number two. All right. Number two asks just to repeat example two, but estimate the medians instead of the means. Okay. So when you do that, um, you to do the medians, you have to line up your numbers from uh, least to greatest, just like I did in the previous example. So for letter A, you know you'd have to start with four. And then what's the next smallest number? Uh, looks like I've got one, two, three sixes. So one, two, three sixes. I've got two sevens. I've got one, two, three, eights. And lastly, I've got one, ten. <clears throat> so now to find the median of this, work your way towards the middle. Right? These cross out, these cross out, these cross out. I have two sevens left, so seven's going to be my middle number. So uh, my median would be uh, seven there. So that's kind of the process that you do to to estimate the medians and uh, instead of the means. So um, for letter A here, when you estimate the 
medians instead of the means. Um, and then it kind of wants you to do it like, like this as well, like it does for and B. <clears throat> so it should come up with these answers. Okay. You can see here the median we found was seven. Well, that's, that's right here. And then I just listed them least to greatest. Uh, range of that would be four hours. And for letter B, when I use all of those medians, uh, you should come up with uh, seven hours. Same thing we kind of did here, except instead of the means, it's the medians. I just didn't go into too uh, much detail there just for time's sake. Lastly, uh, okay, so if you have questions, please let me know and I'll be glad to help. Lastly, uh, one thing you can also do is, is you can use maybe some technology to perform simulations that have a lot of trials. And here's an example of that. It says, as stated uh, in one of the exploration problems, which we didn't do, but um, it says 60% of all seventh graders have visited a planetarium. Use technology to simulate choosing uh, 200 random samples of 50 students each. How closely do the samples estimate the percent of all seventh graders who have visited a, plan a planetarium? Okay, so the actual percentage is, so it shows us right here, uh, 60%. The number of random samples is 200 tells us right here. And the sample size is uh, 50. Okay. So you can see that when the estimate or when the simulation is run here, the estimates are clustered around this 60%. Let's write that down. Estimates are clustered around 60%. Most of our data, let's also write this down, most of our data are between, well, you can kind of see here, um, the bulk of our data is right here. And I would say that's between about, oh, let's, I would say about 45% and oh, probably close to 70%. Okay, so what can we um, conclude from that? Well, most of the samples are within 15% of the actual percentage. <clears throat> 50, 45 from 60 is 15%, and 60 to 70 or 75 is close to 15%. Right? You could even say that this is about 75, and that would be 15% away. Okay. Now, we didn't actually run the simulation here, uh, but again, that's one way that could happen in the real world um, is by using simulations to model things that we don't actually do. Um, so we're just kind of making some conclusions from this graph here. Okay, that wraps up uh, section 8.2. Like I said, to me, it kind of reminds me of um, polling when I was in uh, elementary and making bar graphs and stuff like that. Um, but then we're just diving a little bit deeper and looking at some of our statistical data from there. Okay, thanks for checking this video out. I'll see you guys later.